What's up guys? In this video, we're going to talk about how to perform a patient assessment. Are you ready? Let's go! Now, of course, as a respiratory therapist or even as a student, you will be expected to know how to perform a patient assessment in clinicals once you start seeing patients. So that is what we're going to talk about in this video to help make that process easier for you. And after watching this video, you will know how to do it the proper way. <laughs> and by that, I mean do it the way that NBRC wants us to do it. Maybe not so much how it's actually done all the time, but how we're supposed to do it. So here's what you need to know. First things first, you must be able to interpret, recognize, and perform the right patient assessment procedures that will lead to the appropriate care for the patient. You will also need to be able to make therapeutic recommendations such as administering therapy in an effective manner. And you must evaluate the patient's progress as well as recognize any adverse reactions that the patient may have. Sounds like a lot, huh? It is not so bad once we break it all down. And that is what we are about to do. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and dive right in. Step number one, check for the doctor's order. This applies to pretty much anything you will do as a student or as a respiratory therapist you should always verify the doctor's order before you proceed. So before entering the patient's room, you should be able to accurately locate the patient's chart and obtain and interpret all the information that is relative to the case at hand. Step two, enter the patient's room. Now, obviously you want to knock before going in, and once you enter, you should wash your hands, then proceed to introduce yourself to the patient. Go ahead and make this a habit now. You should wash your hands immediately when entering the patient's room and then wash them again before leaving the patient's room. Step 3. Gather any subjective information from the patient. This is the information that the patient tells you through communication. This information is not measurable. For example, if the patient says, I'm having trouble breathing, this would be subjective information because they are telling you that they are having trouble breathing. Step 4. Now you can gather any objective information from the patient. Now objective information on the other hand is measurable. It includes the vital signs that you will measure during your assessment. And again, measure is the key word here. So here are the vital signs that you should obtain on every patient. You should get their heart rate, oxygen saturation, respirations, and breath sounds. Each of these vital signs is classified as objective information and of course they are a very important part of your patient assessment. Step 5. Use the information that you have obtained from the patient to interpret and develop an analysis of the patient. So basically, now is the time to put what you learned to the test. How were the patient's vital signs? Was their heart rate in the normal range? How about their oxygen saturation? Were they breathing too fast or too slow? Did you hear any wheezing in their breath sounds? This is all stuff you should take into consideration to form your analysis of the patient. And that brings us to step six. Use the information that you gathered to develop a plan of care. Now it's time to make a plan for the patient. Do you recall all the questions that we just asked in step five? Well, now it's time to answer those questions in order to help make a treatment plan for this patient. So was their oxygen level low? If so, now would be the time to provide the patient with a higher FIL2. Or was the patient wheezing? If so, now would likely be a good time to administer a short-acting bronchodilator like albuterol. 
In this step, you should use everything you gathered in your assessment to help develop a proper action plan to treat the patient in the most effective way possible. And last but not least, the final step of performing a patient assessment is to smash that like button. Okay, just kidding. That's obviously not really a step, but I would greatly appreciate it and it really helps the channel grow. All right, guys, that, my friends, is how to properly perform a patient assessment as a respiratory therapist or a respiratory therapy student. I hope this video was helpful for you, and I hope you can take what you learned and apply it in the real world once you start seeing patients on your own. If you thought this video was helpful, again, please hit that thumbs up button. And if there's any specific topics that you want us to cover in our next video, you can leave that down below in the comments. And definitely don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell because we got some really good videos that will be coming out soon and you don't want to miss them. That's it for this one. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video. And as always, breathe easy my friends.